Hey guys, coming at you from a different viewpoint. This is actually where I do all my editing. And all my kids are gone tonight, so it's very quiet around here. And so I thought I would do the video up here. Wanted to show you guys how I cut myself. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, and actually it's been a suggested video from you guys as well. So this is the knife that I cut myself with. This is the Benchmade Contego, the fixed version. I really, really like this knife, still like it and I am not going to get rid of this one. In fact, I just carved the uh, Thanksgiving turkey with this. So, what I did is... It, it's kind of funny because I, I don't think of it as unsafe, but it is unsafe by the sheer nature of it because I cut myself. But I almost think of it more as sloppy. Sloppy knife work. And you work with knives long enough, uh, you're bound to mess up sooner or later. So I'm going to show you guys mine just to get a conversation going. And it's kind of fun to talk about anyway. So what I was doing was I was working with the ferrule rod and um, I've got my thumb on the back of the blade. I actually caught this whole thing on film, so I'll show it to you in just a second. And I wasn't getting it, so I kind of shifted positions. And as I did, I kind of shifted the knife too, and my thumb ended up like this. Now, I'm not thinking through this when I'm doing when I'm going through this, but this you don't have a lot of leverage on it. If I'm trying to strike a ferro rod, I don't have a lot of leverage with the thumb and the hand in this position. So what I did is hold the thumb back, and you can kind of see right there what's going to happen, right? So instead of lifting it back, and again, the thumb shouldn't have been there in the first place, but I just pulled it straight back to put it here and get, again, get that leverage for that, uh, for that fail rod. And that's when the knife bit me. So go ahead and take a look. Fortunately, it didn't need stitches. It was a good one though. It took a while to heal up. It was a bleeder as you can see from the video. Uh, what I ended up doing is I took the opportunity and sealed it with uh, pine resin and made a video out of it. So it worked that way. But I think it's important to know not to be distracted when you're using a knife and it's very easy to do. Uh, I found when I've gone out, maybe it's been a bad day and you're kind of pissed off or something and you're just kind of working with the knife and maybe a little distracted. Other times I notice when I should stop knife work is uh, towards maybe the, the end of the night uh, from a long backpacking trip. If I've hiked in a long ways, I'm tired, I'm fatigued, and I notice that's when my knife work starts getting really sloppy or I'm just not thinking. So that's I, there's been times when that's happened and I thought, oh, okay, you know what? Just put the knife away and be done with it. I'm too tired to deal with it and think through this and be safe about it. So I'll put it away. So it's just important to recognize when we're like that and hopefully avoid a very serious cut uh, that could uh, potentially be life-threatening or just a, make an otherwise good trip a really, really bad one and result in having to go home, go to the emergency room and get lots of stitches. So. Thought I would share this one with you guys, uh, talk a little knife safety uh, by showing you <laughs> what not to do. Anyway, thanks much for watching, guys. See ya.